Good afternoon and uh, welcome back. Uh, <clears throat> I'll be talking on uh, LSM, the present and future. Basically, it's primarily App Armor. Uh, most of it is App Armor, just because there's a little bit of module stacking in the right end. I had to put just LSM. But and uh, my name is Goldwyn Rodriguez. I am uh, a file system developer in Jeff's team, but uh, also working on App Armor right now. So just out of Curiosity, how many of you have disabled app armor in, on the systems just because it's taking too much <laughs> cycle? Well, yes, it's, it, it, it is quite a pain because it, it does take up quite a lot of memory. But once you get hacked or your systems get compromised, you come back, talk to me, and say, ah, I should have put it on. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, on my other system, I don't have it on, though. So what is AppArmor? Just to give you a basic run through, it's a manda mandatory access control uh, for securing your Linux systems. Basically, it just uh, uh, kind of a jail it creates, uh, and it's controlled by the kernel. So you have a kernel module inside it, and uh, you just define profiles. And when AppArmor loads, it compiles those profiles, and it, it, it gets included inside your uh, kernel. So all security checks, whatever a process is allowed to do or not allowed to do, is actually controlled by your, uh, your kernel. So, it's, it's, so even if your process gets compromised or your process gets rogue, it will not be able to access anything beyond what it's supposed to access. Or uh, to, to extend that a little bit further, we'll see what SLE 15 has to offer. Uh, as compared to other LSMs which are av available, you have SE Linux, which is pretty complicated to configure. App Armor is much more simpler because it defines a simple set of rules. Uh, we'll just come to a, a brief overview of what it is. So in SLE 15, what do you have to offer? Uh, we'll just start with a brief, brief profile as to what it looks like. You have uh, some include statements which basically include the global rules. And uh, this is a simple trace root profile. Uh, it'll include some more abstractions. And finally, you have the rules here, uh, which in, in this case, it's denying capabilities and allowing only network IPv4 and IPv6 raw packets. Uh, and rest of them are file. Uh, I'm not going to explain the whole of it. It's best you read the man page for this. OK, so what was already present before SLE 15? We had, it started off with the uh, rules for files. Uh, we as SUSE developed networking, and we were carrying legacy patches since, I don't know, time immemorial. Uh, we also had capabilities and all. Uh, recently, since upstream moved fast enough, we added ptrace where you can be, of course, it's used for debugging, but you can define rules where whether you want to be ptraced or you can, are capable of ptracing or not. You have mount, where it simply defines whether the process is capable of mounting other file systems. And the interesting thing is signal. So uh, again, it's whether you can receive a signal or you can send a signal. So if you block those things, if your process grows rogue, it will not be able to terminate, say, other processes in the system, and where you could probably send signals to other processes and terminate them. So not quite. Well, do you want to know about it? Uh, you can define what signals you want to define, as in, you can define signal types, you can define, uh, uh, whether you want to receive a signal or send a, or send a signal or block each of them uh, of, each of each signal type. So yes, if you can you can restrict both ways or allow both ways however you want it. So we've had role-based access control for again quite a long time. It is implemented through PAM app and uh, mappings from user to profiles are done through policy. 
and it, is, it has a concept of changing hats, where uh, once the user logs in, you change the hat, and it, it, it in, inherits the property or the policies. And of course, whatever processes you fork will inherit the same policies further down. So uh, just because I'll be talking about networking more later on, what comes in the future, I'm just giving a little more granular information about network. You could define rules with respect to TCP or UDP. You can define versus IPv4 or IPv6 and other different. AF Unix is still coming. It's still not there, but we'll, we'll have it soon. Not in SLE 15, of course, maybe the next uh, major release. So what's hard about security in, uh, in, in, the, in, in a Linux system is basically with containers. So secu because every rule is made in, from the kernel, you cannot make specific rules which would be governed by the container itself. We'll probably think, uh, see that later. But to, in order to at least facilitate a part of it, just like containers work, we have namespaces. You can have different top levels of namespaces. Like in this case, you have at the top level the system namespace, which is having uh, Firefox and NSCD profiles. And if you generate another container, you can assign, say, namespace one to it, and that will be its own, uh, own domain and own profile. I'll just give a simple demo of this. OK, I need to find the cursor. OK. OK, I needed two screens. Uh, it came back to me. Sorry about that. I don't really want to full screen this. Let me just resize it, it'll be easier. Okay, much simpler. So what I'm trying to do here is create a new uh, process, bash with a profile, foo, just a random name, and uh, assigning a namespace to NS2 to it. So when you execute bash, you'll get a new profile. And if you do a PSAZ, it'll show that this process is under foo. But if you go to the upper domain, you'll see it is under namespace too. So you can add and remove processes inside namespaces, just like you do containers. So in order to secure your, your container system. OK, this was a little hard than expected. But going back to, OK. I wish it moved a little faster than this. OK. We also have what is known as profile stacking, where uh, you could have, say, pro profile A and profile B. And if you stack them, the uh, keyword or the separator is slash slash ampersand. You will get a collective set of rules for, for both the profiles. Now. It may not be helpful on a single domain, but it, for containers, it's quite helpful because what you can do is, if a process is already running on a container, or rather, if you want to start a new process, and you want a set of rules which are visible to only the container, you can administer it from the top end. So that's all I have for SLE 15 we'll have a look at what AppArmor 3 promises. Now, while developing uh, AppArmor 
uh, for SLE 15, we had the problem of where we included a network patch, and somewhere something on Tumbleweed started breaking, uh, primarily DNS, uh, DNS uh, for one of the developers. So it, it pinned down to, or after Git bisect, it came down to networking. It so happened that uh, we were not moving with respect to the policies and the kernel versions in the same, same line. So we started with what is known as policy versioning. It is going to end up breaking things, but uh, hopefully it won't be as bad. So you can include policies with respect to uh, version numbers of the kernel and each, oh, sorry, version numbers of the user space program, and each kernel version will have what kernel version, sorry, each, sorry, I'm, I'm getting tongue tied. Each AppArmor version will have what kernel versions it can possibly support. Uh, the second issue, of course, is with respect to starting AppArmor. Now, the main goal of AppArmor is to be as fast as possible in our, in, during startup, because it, we want to secure as many processes as possible. Because the later it starts, you know, some of the processes are already started, and if, it, if there's one rogue, you're in trouble. So right now what it was happening is we are reading the profiles and compiling them, storing them in the cache, and eventually loading them. Uh, we are wasting a lot of time with respect to compiling. And of course, a bigger problem is, which we have faced in uh, our container product as well, that the file system could be read-only. So it just fails starting. Uh, the possible solution for this is that we package the cache altogether. And uh, because a cache would be mostly constant for a particular kernel. And package it and send it across as a regular package. So the advantage here is that it will, of course, load up faster. But you will have also have problems of overwriting caches. So you need a separate directory, which would be primarily handled through hashing. And uh, it will go in different directories. But however, if there's a hash clash, of course, you'll have a uh, uh, an extension like .0, .1, or whatever, which will extend it further. OK, this also allows you to overlay policies. So if you have a policy which is already there and you have a new set of policies, you can overlay both, not only your policies, but also your cache directories. So even if you have got some old systems out there, you can overlay them, and eventually you'll get whatever is new. And if there are old ones, it'll continue to use the old ones. The next topic is on integrity measurement. Uh, it's, a, it's a security system for uh, regular file systems. It uses a security exadder. If, so it's a, it's a very simple solution where if you're, when you're reading the file and the hash does not match the exadder in security.ima, it'll give you EPUM or access denied or something of that sort. So this is included in uh, AppArmor profiles, or would be included in AppArmor profiles, where you can just specify the IMA hash, and uh, it'll, it'll figure out whether it's a valid profile or not. So if, you, if someone or a hacker goes and changes your profile, the hash will change, and it'll fail to load the profile altogether, giving you uh, good enough notice, hopefully. Another thing what's coming up is AF Unix sockets. You can define on uh, whether you want to send, receive, all the actions possible. You can also define on peer where you want to connect. Similarly with uh, network mediation with, with your uh, IPv4, IPv6. So in the previous slide I showed, you can only uh, check with respect to your, uh, what kind of packet it is, whether it's an IPv4, IPv6, TCP, or anything of that sort. Now you will be able to define your IP address and your port as well. Uh, no, we're not trying to compete with firewalling. It's not a firewalling, but it's, it's 
something close to that. We will not be able to do mediations or natting or any of that sort. But this would basically help with, uh, again, things like containers where you know that all traffic must be routed through a particular IP address only, or uh, only some ports may be open enough for the whole container altogether. OK. <clears throat> Finally, the systemd integration. Right now, it's just a big script, which uh, calls up parts of the function. We'll be able to have systemd call libapm out directly. Uh, it'll, it'll be able to compile policies and allow loading as soon as possible. Uh, primarily for speed, because we want, again, the app armor to be as early as possible. Finally, securing a container. Uh, we've discussed about namespaces. We've discussed about uh, uh, regular networking and all. But still, there is one problem which uh, the container is not able to satisfy, which is basically uh, if you want different security modules on your host and your, your container. Like your host could be using, say, App Armor, and your guest is using, say, SE Linux or something. How do we solve that problem? And the problem comes from the fact that a kernel does not know what a container is, honestly. So if you ask a kernel a container, it'll say, well, I don't know what a container is. Uh, Primarily because a container is nothing but a set of namespaces, which are um, bundled together, and you start processes on that. So yeah, I think I discussed this, but I'll just, OK. So kernel is common between a container. It's not a virtual machine where you can have a separate kernel for a host and the guest. In a container, you have uh, the same kernel. And you have the same LSM. So if a container wants to go its way and try to have a different LSM, we are out of luck. So the solution which, was, which is currently on the works is module stacking. We've had uh, major and minor modules, uh, sorry, minor module stacking already. We'll talk about what is the difference between a major module and a minor module. So before that, I'll just take a technical detour about what and how LSM works. So in most of the data structures in uh, LSMs, you have a special uh, special variable called iSecurity in case of inode, or fSecurity in case of file, or sSecurity for superblock. So this is kind of a, a void pointer where uh, your security modules can park their data on it. and uh, most of the, or rather the two major ones, SE Linux and App Armor does that. The second way LSM works is it has a set of hooks which you may or may not subscribe to, but those are basically function calls which when you register your security module, it offers these functions which act as hooks. So what's the difference between major and minor? Your major is like App Armor and SE Linux, which have not only the LSM hook units, but also your, uh, your blobs in each of the data structures. And examples, of course, are App Armor and SE Linux. But you've got also minor LSMs, uh, which have the shared resources. Uh, you can, examples are Landlock, Yama, Smack. Now, just because you have a different uh, different function calls, what they did was in minor stacking is they made a linked list of all the function calls which are possible or registered and managed to do minor stacking. But with major stacking right now, of course, there's one single function pointer. So they are still working on how it has to be uh, <clears throat> shared among all the stacked, uh, stacked LSM modules. Then you have the user interfaces, which like proc adder security, which tells about what security module is using. Now, we cannot change that, but then the common consensus is that we'll add more attributes, which will either show whether it's App Armor and SE Linux, or just App Armor, or just SE Linux. 
So, yeah, that's all I had for my presentation. Uh, I, <clears throat> besides doing this, I also looked into other possible, uh, as a part of Hack Week, I also, <clears throat> sorry, other, other possible security modules which we could use, and Landlock kind of turned out to be pretty good because it can minimize the scratch surface and prevents a, uh, a supplies a, a kernel module, or rather, or a BPF module which you can load, and uh, it'll, it'll work as your uh, security module. So the, the responsibility of securing is actually comes down to your application developer where he could compile modules and depending on the environment variables can put in which security you want completely. So yeah, that's about it. If you have any questions, anyone? About what's coming, so. Okay, thank you very much.